Hey guys, my name is Jasmine and today we're going to be making quilt inspired pieces. Before we get started, I'm going to tell you what you guys need. So you need at least one piece of paper, colored pencils, crayons, a sharpie or multiple sharpies, whatever kind that you want to use, a drawing pencil, which is also a graphite pencil, and an eraser. So what is a quilt? What are we going to be inspired from? A quilt is a traditionally made textile that is made in three different layers. So you have a bottom layer, a middle layer, which is mostly like fluff, like insulation, kind of warming layer. And then you have the top layer, which is what we're gonna be inspired from. The top layer is typically made from different pieces that are um, combined together kind of like a collage. And a collage is a um, basically a puzzle of different pieces that fit together. So we're gonna be inspired by that. And we're also going to be inspired from um, what well, you might see if you look out of a plane. If you have been in a plane, if you have flown before, and you look down, all of the different landscapes kind of puzzle together and um, look really cool in all these different shades of green, browns, um, and lakes too. But that's what we're going to be inspired from. I'm going to jump in with my, I'm actually going to jump in with a Sharpie. You can jump in with whatever um, utensil you want to use. But I'm going to start making my shapes, and when I'm making my shapes, you can either um, connect, connect them or have them separate. I'm going to have my shapes separate, but thinking about what landscape might look like from a plane. You can also think of um, fields of plants in neighborhoods and houses, and how everything might interlock with one another. And I'm also filling up my entire page. So here's my entire page. I'm actually gonna add a little more here. I'm also, just like with many quilts, I'm going to add my own patterns in each of these. And a pattern is just a repeated um, design. So that's what I'm gonna, going to do. Oh, excuse me. And some of my shapes, I'm not going to keep all of them like that. Some of them are going to just stay solid for one solid color. So, oh my gosh, for one solid color. But um, so yeah, I'm going to have a mix of pattern shapes and solid color shapes. So I'm going to jump in with my patterns. You can do whatever pattern you like. If you might, um, if you've been in a plane, if you have flown before, and you've seen what a landscape might look like from above and the patterns that are in there, you can incorporate that. Or you can make up your own patterns. Or you might think something might look like. I'm going to do a couple different patterns. So those are my patterns, those are my shapes. And I'm going to jump in with my color here. You can use whatever colors you like, you can use random colors, you can use a whole color scheme, or you can do random colors. Whatever you think. It doesn't have to be um, landscape colors. You don't have to stick with blues and greens and browns. You can get into reds and other colors. There's no set rules on how you have to be inspired by landscapes. And also think about um, how hard you're pressing down on your tinsel, how light you can make a color, how um, bold you can make a color. You can also mix colors, you can layer them on top of one another. There's a few possibilities on what you can do with your coloring. So there's that color for that shape. I'm also gonna use this color over here in my solid here 
And also, just like with a lot of art pieces that you might make in your life, you can turn your paper different ways to see if you might like it another way. Like how this is different from where I started. I'm going to move on to another color. I think I'm going to use blue, maybe a blue colored pencil. There's that blue. I think that's all of them I'm going to use for now. I might come back to it. I'm going to start leaving my colors out though so I know what colors I've used. If I need to go back to another color. Let's see. I'm going to go in with a yellow. You might see a lot of yellows and browns from above if you're looking down on like a wheat build. Unless I add more shapes, I think this is all the yellow that I'm going to use because I want my piece to be a little bit balanced. Also, if you want it to make um, your piece symmetrical so that they're the same on each side, you can do that. Mine is not like that. Mine is asymmetrical. Things are not the same or not totally the same on each side, but they can still kind of have that flow happening <clears throat> on each side. Gonna move on to brown. Gonna do my solid shapes this color. The remainder of my solid shapes this color. So the first color I use, and I'm going to fill in lines on this form, this pattern here. You can also make your patterns as detailed as you want. If you did patterns that are a little bit more complex than mine, that's completely fine. You can keep your pattern simple, or you can make them complex. Both are pretty cool. Both are completely up to you. You can do both if you want. If you'd like, you can also make your background a different color. You can color it a different color. So this white space, you can make it any color you want. Or you can just leave it white. I'm going to just leave mine white. But I am going to do something a little bit extra when I get done coloring. Blue. And then for my white lines and my yellow, I'm going to do, I'm going to do pink. thing that I'm going to do, which you typically won't see this on quilts, I feel like, but I'm going to do mark making that will kind of resemble how the pieces are connected to the quilt itself into one another. So I'm just going to make little lines on the outside. Reminds me of stitching. Since quilt quilting is a textile art, use cloth to make it. One. 
I'm only gonna do three like that. I don't think I'm gonna do all of them like that. I might change my mind. We will see. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. <clears throat> you can also do different kind of lines to resemble stitching. You can do like X's instead. These lines are also another way to make pattern. It's all repetition. It's a repeated design. Yep. And there we go. There is my quilt inspired design. So once again, we talked about quilting, how it's a textile art, how it's made of three layers, and we basically were inspired from the top of the quilt, how there are different patterns, different repeated designs, and it's basically a collage of everything. Everyone's kind of, everything's kind of stitched together, kind of like a puzzle, but it all clicks together very well. And there's lots of possibilities you can do with this. There's tons of landscapes you can be inspired by, and I hope you guys make more. And you can also connect them all, like different pieces, and you can connect them all together if you make different um, papers that are inspired by those, different artworks. And you could also make one big one if you want. But I hope you guys do just that and make more, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.